Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi there. This is Deborah again, or Deborah Bailey. For those of you who may not listen to my podcast before, I'm just introducing myself as my first name in the, in the other podcast. Just assuming you already know who I was, but um, if you haven't been listening, then I am Deborah Bailey. I'm the host of this podcast, Women Entrepreneurs Radio. And as uh, I said in the introduction, I've been hosting this podcast since 2008. So we're going to our 10th year. It's so hard to even imagine that, to be honest with you, because I really only thought this was going to last for a few weeks. So it's kind of interesting when you start things, you don't know how they're going to end up. And you just take the chance, you take the risk, and then um, suddenly there you are, um, years later, and you're still doing your thing. So I think there's a lot to be said to that in regards to um, what this... uh, uh, podcast episode is about and for the past couple of, past couple of weeks I've been sharing information about my new uh, class it's called uh, five uh, steps to making changes in your business and it's part of the new school I created on teachable.com and I'm going to put all the links in the show notes because their links are kind of long. And I don't want to go into all the dashes and everything that's involved. So you can look in the show notes. You can see the links. Or you can also come to either dbellycoach.com, which is my main website. And you can see um, information about the online classes. Or you can also go to womenentrepreneursecrets.com. And also you will see information in the sidebar about the class and how you can sign up to get um, updates about it and all that kind of good stuff. So there's, you know, ways for you to find out about it, but also in the show notes. Of course, you can also find the links. So I've been taking some time out because I usually don't um, do my own podcast episodes. Usually I'm interviewing someone else, talking to someone else. I'm just not doing my own thing. And um, something I shared today on Facebook was about this term that's called an ambiverge which is supposed to be, I guess, a combination of introvert and and extrovert. And I definitely am an introvert, and I think for some reason I'm seeing that introverts are like in now. You know, like nerds are in and all all the kind of thing like that, where people who always felt a little to the side of things, not quite integrated into the um, mainstream, suddenly now everybody is part of that group. And I'm not saying that that's not true, but it's kind of interesting that how now it's it's totally in now to be part of the group that was <laughs> particularly pushed off to the side. That's kind of interesting. Maybe people now are finally stepping up and saying, yes, I mean, they're, and if any of you have remember the um, Revenge of the Nerds and all those kinds of movies in real, I think there were like five of them, actually. The first one was really funny and crazy. Um, so if you've ever seen that, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's funny. It's not as crazy. It's totally politically incorrect but (laughs) so if you watch it and you're like oh my gosh you recommended this please just take it as it is and just have fun with it and don't judge it um it's just really silly and ridiculous sort of like animal house have you ever seen that it's that kind of thing it's irreverent not meant to be taken seriously just kind of silly way of pointing out certain things and i think when we talk about nerds and people being pushed on the side and saying, well, if you study too hard, you read too much, you're not fitting into what we think you should fit into. A lot of people may have felt that, well, I don't fit in, so where where do I go? And for some people, um, coming up in maybe the high school and and school, middle school, whatever, they may have felt bullied, you know, those kind of things may have happened to them. So they may have felt a lot of pressure to fit in and to be what they weren't. And I think that happens a lot in our culture where people feel so pressured to be what they are not. And a lot of times that comes out later 
And maybe they themselves start to bully other people because they have so much frustration stored inside of them and so much anger that now they're going to try to beat others down. And that's really, you know, unfortunate to use a really, um, you know, simple word for it. It's extremely unfortunate because a lot of times when people are doing that, they're really dealing with things within themselves that are unresolved and they can't resolve them or they haven't resolved them, don't know they can. And so they use that as a way to hurt other people who may be triggering them in some way or dealing with unresolved hurts and pains and traumas. And that is why a lot of cruelty is, I would say, mainstreamed, you know. Because we really don't deal with that. We don't admit that. And a lot of that comes also from what we see around us. You know, in the social media space where everybody is smiling and happy and every life is perfect. And everything is beautiful. And then people just don't allow you to see the warts and all the things that aren't right. Uh, because they're projecting an image they think is really going to help them to sell whatever it is they're selling. And let you know, we'll see if you use this certain things I'm, I'm selling, that you'll have this perfect life too. But the thing is, a lot of stuff has been covered up and um, people have a different impression of what they think they're seeing and it's not real to begin with. So that is um, a real negative from all that, you know, the social media world that projects that really airbrushed lifestyle, I think. Um, it's just kind of bad. And it makes people feel pressure a lot of times. It really shouldn't happen, you know, because everybody goes through something. Everybody's going through their thing. Nobody's uh, living a perfect life that is unscathed by hurt, by pain, by loss. It just doesn't happen, you know. So that's why I I really try to be honest with you about what I'm going through and what, what's happening and what I'm presenting uh, when I have my interviews. I really try to do that because it's really hard for me to just bullshit you, to be honest with you, I'll just say it honestly, because, you know, I know how that feels to feel pressure to live up to something that is not real. You know, as a business owner, um, I probably have said this before, but years ago, seems like decades ago, it really wasn't, when I came out of the corporate world, um, like around 2005, 2006, uh, right around the time of the whole uh, financial meltdown, actually, not good timing for me, but, um, you know, when you started a business then, it was all about saying we, you know, you, you really were supposed to make your business look larger than it actually was, because then you would think, well, people don't really want to deal, do business with me because I'm a small business, and they're going to think I can't do this, and all that kind of thing, so a lot of it was based on that. You know, we'd say we, and, and we have to present this kind of corporate image and all that kind of thing. But then we went through a change after throughout the whole um, financial thing, and, and I think that all the changes we went through as a country. We went through a change, and then suddenly it was like, well, you just have to be yourself, and you're not pretending anymore to have a big business when you don't. You know, so you can, you can just say me <laughs> and I. You know, I'm doing this, and, and I'm into all these different things, you know. So I think there was a change there between how it was and then how it became. And right now, it just kind of feels like, in, particularly in the social media space, which definitely isn't the space off of social media, trust me. You know, I think a lot of people think social media is the world, and it is not. They kind of believe well, everybody on social media reflects who's out in the world doing their thing, and it, and it does not. Trust me on that one. It doesn't. It's a whole different space. So I think a lot of people on here now, um, I think there's a couple of camps, to be honest with you. I think there's the people who, as I was kind of referring to, who are kind of looking at, well, everything's perfect in my life. Here's my perfect this. Here's my perfect that. And always really showing the best of everything. And then there's just these people who may be showing all the warts and the unphotoshopped. <laughs> lifestyle that they have and, and just kind of being honest about it and um, then there's a contrarian to everything's always bad or they're always going to take the position different than other, than other people take so I think that's just normal stuff but perhaps social media amplifies that because it's, it's really a hot house where there's just a certain group of people in there and then 
It's easy to think that that reflects everybody's sensibilities. And it really doesn't. To be perfectly honest with you, it doesn't. So if you're someone looking for a client and they're spending a lot of time on social media, don't assume everybody's of the same mindset. You know, I've done workshops in libraries and work with people who are in business and they want to be in business in various age groups, various ethnic groups, you know, and they may not quite be in the flow of social media. And they all have their own things that they want to do and people they want to reach. So don't make any assumptions as to who you think they are. You know, sometimes you've got to go out in the world and actually talk to people and meet them where they are. And then you find out that they may not have the same mindset that you think because you spend a lot of time on social media and you assume everybody is coming from the same space. And I can, I can tell you quite honestly that's not true. Um, so you can assume that everything is nice and neat because someone presents that appearance to you. That's part of what they're presenting because that's part of what they're selling. You know, um, it, it works. <laughs> that's why people do it. That's why they present the best. And I always talk about every always winning and having success and making six, seven, eight figures because that's what sells, you know. So you got to take it all, look at it, apply it to your life in a really um, a realistic way and say, does this work for me? This is what I want to do. Is this how I want to show up in the world? Um, I think that's best. I really do. And I think it's best for you to kind of present yourself in the way that makes sense for you as opposed to trying to copy other people and it doesn't fit for you. That's so, so important. You know, I, I can't emphasize that enough, and I have said that in other shows as well. It's very important. So this particular show, I want to talk about creativity, and I guess what I've said um, up to this point really fits into that. I want to talk cre about creativity because my class, um, Five Steps to Making Changes in Your Business, is based on my book, Think Like an Entrepreneur transforming your career and taking charge of your life. And that was originally written for people who were in the workplace, and particularly in corporate, around the time of the financial meltdown, I could also say. But, um, you know, a lot of people who I had heard from were people already who had businesses who were making that transition. So that's really who I heard about, um, had feedback about this course. Uh, about the book rather so that's what this course is more based on the people who already um, have a business or looking to make changes in their business or possibly someone who has been in the workplace and so they're saying you know I want to start a business I want to do something now so also I think this is something that will resonate with you as well and if you're starting out it's quite possible it will too I'm not saying this is the end all be all for all people <laughs> certainly not but it may be something that you can capture and say, you know, I, I can identify with this. This is something I think I can get hold of. So if it is, that's great. You know, you can check out the course. I'm going to put the link, as I said, again, in the show notes. You can see the promo. The promo, you can see the um, um, button at the top of the page, the sales page. And then you can also see the intro. And, and if there's something that resonates with you, that'd be wonderful. You know, the course is priced at $97 right now. So it's not for the long term. Because um, I want to price it that way right now to make it accessible to a lot of people. And I hope that people will take it. And those people who take it will also share a testimonial. Or at least, you know, give me some feedback on what they thought and what they brought away from it. Until the price goes up. So right now really is the time to check it out. So, okay. <laughs> Just giving... I guess a little commercial there for the course, but you know, to talk about creativity, that's one of the uh, chapters in the book. And actually creativity is not just doing art and that kind of thing, but it's also just thinking outside the box and doing something differently than you have normally done, thinking in different ways. You know, I think right now around us, without getting too political, which I, you know, I'm not trying to do right now because that could be a whole other um, podcast episode. But there's a lot of people who seem to want to go back to the past, whatever imagined past they think, where things are the way they want them to be, and people aren't doing things they don't want them to do, that kind of thing. And and that is really, <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, because life is about growing, evolving, you know, going beyond where you were. So you can't go back to some imagined past that was good for some people, not for others. So... In order to really grow, exist, have success in this world, this is, you know, me speaking, my impressions, my opinion, 
you have to be willing to grow. You have to be willing to take risks. You have to be willing to think differently than you did before. That's part of growth. That's part of evolution. That's part of learning different things as you go through the world. You know, one of the things that I think is kind of interesting is how, particularly on social media, some some people will call out others for what they did years ago. I'm like, you know, the people calling them out, I think, are people who probably haven't been on the planet for very long because they don't understand that evolution happens. And the things that you may have done when you were 10, 11, 12, 20, 30 may not be the things you do at 50, 60, and 70. You know, no. <laughs> you may actually evolve. In fact, that's healthy for you to have a different viewpoint because you live through different things in your life. Okay, so my opinion, just my opinion, is for those people who are so willing to call others out, live a little, go through some things, and then we'll talk. You know, I'm not going to judge people unless they've got to a certain age and they're still holding these ridiculous thoughts. <laughs> I'm not going to go into great details here. I'm just not going to go there. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Um, which shows you haven't grown, you haven't evolved. That's a whole other thing. But when you see that people have come a ways and they're willing to say, you know, I think differently now than I did, or I did things differently then because, you know, I was in a different frame of mind, that's normal. That's normal evolution. That's what it's called. That's what the word means, you know. So for those people who don't get that yet and you're of a certain age, you will get it. If you are blessed to live long enough, you will learn. I can certainly say that. As someone who's been through some things and uh, particularly um, you know losing both my parents believe me you will learn a few things that you never realized once you go through these transitions um, going through certain losses going through certain things that humble you you will learn so for me to look back on the person I was in my 20s <laughs> you know I'm not gonna drag that around anymore you know, I'm not going to apologize for that person or explain that person because I'm not her anymore. So the thing is, is growth and evolution. That's part of being creative also because we, we take the risk to do different things, to look at things in a different way, to try different things. I don't think you could be a business owner and just stay stuck. I don't think you're going to be a profitable business owner or maybe you can hold on with, to what you have. But on some level, your experience, your knowledge has to come into play in that. It's growth. That's growing through these different experiences that you have. That's part of it. And, and I look at that as creativity as well. It doesn't just mean art. <laughs> it doesn't just mean, you know, I'm drawing a picture or I'm making music. But it's, it's a thing of saying, well, I've tried these different things in my life. I've been through these different things. I'm willing to look at the world in a different way. And try different things and be exposed to different ideas that maybe I didn't know about before. That all adds to your tool belt. That was all a part of what you bring with you when you go into each new situation. And now you can bring that with you and you can apply that. And that's how I look at and define creativity. And I think that you really need that if you're going to survive in this world that we are in in spite of whoever is sitting you know in charge of everything you're going to have to be willing to learn new things willing to be open to new ideas working with different people who maybe you're not used to or you have judgments about because you haven't really been exposed to them i think that's required now or you're not going to make it that's my opinion of course, you may disagree, and that's okay. But I'm just saying, based on how I'm looking at it right now, I've been very fortunate that I was in IT, particularly to work with people from all over the world. And, um, you know, also in this podcast, interview people from all over the world. And, you know, there's some things that people all want. You know, they want happiness. They want peace. They want to take care of themselves and their families. There's a lot of commonalities. You know, but also looking at how different people think and what they've experienced and learning from them. There's a lot to be said for that. And you've got to be willing to open yourself up to those experiences. Or you're just going to keep repeating the same things over and over and over again. And if you do that, you're not going to grow. It's really that simple. I don't care how old you are. 
you're not going to grow if you're not willing to go beyond what you've always experienced. It's that simple. Okay, so that's why I think creativity is so important. So important. And that's why I made it one of the uh, modules in the course, creativity, the course that also was in, in the book. You really have to look at it, be willing to look at things in a different way. If your mind is closed off and all you can say to everything is, I know, I know, I know, I know already, well, then you're done. You're never going to be open to anything new. You're never going to move beyond to where you are. It's, it's really that simple. You have to be willing to be open. And that takes risk. Because if you don't know what's going to happen, if I say this, if I do this, if I put this product out here, if I put this service out here, you have no idea what may happen. That takes risk. It really does. And everybody's not willing to do that because they want to try to control everything. You can't control anything. I, I can tell you that for a fact. You think you can control everything? Contact at thebaileycoach.com. Email me and tell me how you've controlled everything. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. Because I, I can tell you that for a fact that you can't. You may think you can, but you can't. So instead of wasting your time on that, stay open to experiences and possibilities. Because that's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to get to the place you want to get to. You know, it can be very difficult because a lot of us... We may want to move on in our businesses or, or, you know, our lives. And we have these ideas we want and you feel like, oh, I'm not going to get there. It seems so big and all these things are happening. I have to keep up with and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it, it can be really intimidating. Very much. But just being open. Learning from someone. Learning things that maybe you thought you knew. That's very important. Very, very important. You know, I learned a very important lesson when I um, changed careers into um, fashion. Actually, I went to fashion after I got out of college. A couple of years after uh, I went to fashion and I was able to get a uh, month abroad in Paris with Parsons School of Design and I went for a year to Fashion Institute of Technology. And then I worked in the garment district, you know, so I was doing things with fashion merchandising and learning about that and working for JCPenney. So I had a lot, I think I had a really good career in the fashion industry before I went to IT, which seems like a big jump. But, um, you know, you never realize what, uh, what you can do sometimes. So um, being in those environments taught me a lot about change and growth. Because particularly in the fashion industry, things are always changing. Every season is something new. So what they teach you, I think for a, for a minute, I was working in this store called Bambergers. It was, it was absorbed into Macy's. It was in New Jersey. And I was in the uh, management training for, for a bit uh, in there. And what they taught you was that you really have to read a lot of different things. They're not saying just read a fashion magazine or a retailing magazine or something. They're saying you really have to be open and aware of everything going on in the culture. Because that is going to affect what people buy. It's going to affect what's out there in the stores. It's going to affect retail. So it really taught you, you have to be aware of everything going on, as much as you can be, because sometimes it's just too much, you know, at this point, I think. But at that time, you really have to be aware of what's happening, because everything feeds into what you're going to see in the store, what you're going to see offered, you know, it's all affecting it. How people feel, what people want, it's going to be affected what's going on around them. And I said the lesson I learned from that was very important. I think um, that took away from that. And fashion very much is like that. At least it was. <laughs> I don't know if it's quite that way right now, but it was a thing that it really took a lot from what was going on in the culture and then to try to predict what the trend would be. But a lot of times the trends, you know, are really happening on the street and what people, other people are doing actually putting together as opposed to someone somewhere in, a, in an office deciding what's going to happen. You know, so... That's what they taught you, though. And that's the thing. 
I also got that message in IT when I was in, you know, the other more left brain kind of uh, experience that we always had to keep up with what the new technology was if you want to stay marketable. And that's the thing. You've got to understand what's going on around you. And that takes being open. That takes being willing to learn, being willing to accept you don't know everything. And you can learn from other people. And you can learn from what's going on around you to see, okay, I think I, there may be a trend here I need to keep in mind. There's something here that I, I need to stay open to because maybe there's an opportunity here. Maybe there's something I can create to meet that need. You know, that's what I'm talking about. That's part of being creative. Being open, willing to learn, willing to say, I don't know at all. I'm going to learn something I never did before, I didn't know about. Maybe someone has something to teach me that I didn't realize. You know, that's what I'm talking about. And it, it can be hard to do if you feel that you know it all. And no one knows it all. <laughs> no one knows it all. So, you, you know, that's, that's not a good way to look at the world if you want to evolve and grow within your business and as a person, as a human being, that's not the way to go. It's not going to help you in the long run. It's going to keep you stuck. If you want to do something different, then you got to be open to know that I don't know it all. I'm willing to learn some new things. I'm willing to take in this new information that's going on around me that maybe what I'm doing, eh, maybe I've done that. Now some other things I need to look at. You know, personally, I feel based on what I'm seeing, around me it's people just really want to go back to basics they're seeing a lot of things around them maybe that you know some people aren't in line with and they want to cut through the crap and bs and, and you know the falseness and just strip that away and get down to basics and there's also you know maybe people want to connect with each other in different ways now it's a reaction maybe to if some people feel uncomfortable about some things going on um, they might feel that, you know, I don't want to be a part of that. I want to make those human connections with people now. And I want to show up in a different way. So that's the trend that you need to look at. How do you feel right now? How are people around you feeling? Maybe the same old thing is not the way to go anymore. You know, for instance, Facebook has made yet another algorithm change. And, um... You know, I look at my page, and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> it's a little frustrating to say, well, why am I sharing this here? Because according to Facebook, two or three people are seeing it when it used to be hundreds. Well, they're a business. They want to make money. Most of their money comes from ads. So they're going to want you to pay to get those those uh, eyeballs on your, or your stuff. So I'm not saying they're wrong, but I'm saying, hmm, okay, maybe there's different ways for you to share. Maybe that's not the be all and end all of creation. Maybe there's other things you need to think about. And for some people who may have built all their whole business model on that, that may be a hard pill to swallow. So they may not particularly want to be open to a change. You know, people offering services based on that may not want to change it because they may not know how to change it. And where should they what should, should they change it to? So they're going to keep telling the same old thing that may not work anymore for anybody. But, you know, if people don't realize that, they're going to keep buying. So you have, you have to take control of your own thing. What works for you? Where are you going? Where are you heading? What kind of business do you want? How do you want to show up in the world? You know, I am an introvert. As I was saying, you know, in the beginning about people being a diverse or nerds or whatever. So I know being on social media all day long does not work for me at all. <laughs> it's, it's just not for me. I, I respect the power of it, the connection involved in it. I love technology, but I know my limits. So knowing that, I have to find ways to deal with that situation. Yes, it, it's very powerful. I can reach people. But maybe I have to find ways to reach them that isn't excruciating for me personally. You know, that's what I mean. You know, if there's something, this is the way you're reaching out to people and the way you're doing your business that doesn't line up with who you are, then you have to look at that and say, maybe that isn't the way to go. Maybe there's some other way I need to go. Because there are other ways and other opportunities, but you just have to be open to them. 
It's not just one way. There's many different ways. You know, the people who ultimately have success may not be the way that people that go that same way that everybody else is going. They may go in a whole different way, you know? Like as, as I was saying, the nerds, the people who are not in the mainstream, and then they find that their way that they've carved out is now the way everybody else wants to go. That's the thing to keep in mind. That's part of being creative. That's part of being open. Okay, so that's the thing I wanted to share with you. To just kind of think about that a little bit. And how that may apply to you. How that applies to you in your life. Because I do believe that if you're a small business owner, you really can't, your business can't be that far away from who you are as a human being. How you're showing up in the world. You know, some people may present an image that is totally not them. And, you know, they do that and that's great. But is that what you want to do? Do you want to line up with who you are? Because there's people waiting to line up with you. There's people who want what you have to share. Don't feel you have to follow people you don't feel comfortable. There's people who wish that you were out there sharing something. Because, wow, I wish X was out there. I wish someone would say something in this way. That's what, there's someone out there looking for that. Trust me. You know, and I can um, verify that in terms of writing. You know, there's a lot of pressure a lot of times on authors to all turn out with the same thing. <laughs> Particularly in the romance space. People read a lot of romance and, and they definitely are very avid readers. And, and the writers who write that are very, you know, excellent business women. And they know how to get the stuff out there. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a genre that doesn't get the respect it deserves. It really doesn't, you know. Um, but there's certain areas of it that some people write this, other people write that. There's a lot of people who write stuff because they know it's going to sell. They may not have a personal commitment to it, but they put it out there because they know it's going to sell because there's people looking for that, and they, they're avid readers. So they may follow what they think is a trend that's already, you know, been out there for a while because they want to make money. And I'm, I'm not saying anything wrong with that. But I feel that there's certain things I want to express, certain kind of characters I want to put out there, certain situations I want to write about, they may not be along those lines. But so I have to have the courage to chart my own path, like a lot of other writers do. I'm not saying I'm the only one. <laughs> Certainly not. But, you know, you might say, well, I'm going to go in this direction. I don't know who's who's out there for me. But I have to do it because it feels right to me. And then you never know. You build up your audience as you go. And you find these people who have been looking for that. But you would never have known if you didn't take the chance. You didn't take the risk. That's what I'm talking about here. Taking the risk. Being open. Being, being ready to follow what's calling you. So you can really create a business that lines up with who you are as a human being. That's what I'm saying. Okay? So, um, I think I've said enough. <laughs> I think I've covered everything I wanted to say. And um, what I will do, as I said before, is I will put the links in the show notes about my uh, course called Teachable. But, of course, you can also get a link on uh, thebaileycoach.com, and you'll see there's a um, menu. In the top menu, there's something that says online classes, and um, you can click on that, and you can, you can get information on, on the particular one I'm referencing today, Five Steps to Making a Change in Your Business. But I'm also offering other courses on that school. Um, one I just recently published was print, um, Marketing for Printerest or on Printerest for Authors. So if you're an author, here's some things about Pinterest that you should look at, definitely, I think, in terms of adding to your marketing toolkit. And um, it's all free. <laughs> you can definitely make an impression for free. Pinterest is a, is a search engine also. So there's a lot of advantages there. You know, just don't think it's Facebook or nothing. There's, there's, there's some other stuff you need to look at. So I'm just putting that in there as well because I just published that. It may be something that you could look at um, in terms of promoting and selling your books if you're an author. So um, that's there as well. And as I said, it will be in the show notes for the link for the school directly. And then I'll have the link for this class. So please check that out. 
And if you like what you heard, you know, as usual, I ask if you could share um, a review on um, iTunes. Or you can email me, contact at thebillycoach.com if you have any questions or anything. And also, there's also womenentrepreneursecrets.com. You can share something there as well and let me know what your thoughts are. If you have any suggestions for things you'd like to hear about, you know, shows you'd like to hear or, um, I don't know, people <laughs> you'd like to be on the show, you can go to the podcast um, uh, tab in the menu bar. It was radio, now it's podcast. You can click on there and there's um, a link there for you to um, download the guidelines for the show. So there's many ways you can get in touch. And, um, you know, you can kind of pitch me if you want to be a prospective guest. I hope you do. Okay? So have a wonderful day. Wonderful week. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, Women Entrepreneur Secrets. Com. And don't forget to listen in on dvcoach.podomatic.com and on iTunes.